Durham County Public Library's first virtual computer class. I'm your host, Mr. Jared, and today we are going to explore how to use Gmail. Um, this um, class will focus on essentially showing you where all the different tools and tricks are in Gmail and what you can do with it. Um, today's lesson is not going to be a complete super deep dive into it. We're going to hit a lot of things that you might not come across in regular Gmail, you know, from day to day use, but it's good to know. Um, and, you know, in terms of the deep dive stuff that we won't get into quite just yet, uh, will be for next time, um, will be how to use Google Drive, how to use Google Calendars, um, and Google Docs, all that sorts of stuff. So, without any further ado, we shall begin. So, uh, first thing to note, um, you don't have to have, uh, fortunately because we're doing this all online, it does not really matter too much what type of computer system you have. So, as you see here, we're using a Mac computer. Um, if you have Microsoft, that's perfectly fine. You can use that. Um, if you use Linux, I mean, you can use that too. That's fine. Don't feel like you have to have the same type of computer type that we are using here today. Um, all of this is online. It should be, um, you know, there shouldn't be too much difference uh, going from one, uh, from one computer to the other when dealing with Gmail. Um, the only real difference is, is if you're doing strictly with your phone, that's a different story, but we'll cover that in another future video at some point. So, um, we're first going to go open up uh, Firefox. Now, you can use whatever browser you like. Uh, preferably, if you can, try and use Chrome or Safari or uh, Firefox. You can use Internet Explorer or I think it's Microsoft Edge now. Um, but I find that that one's a little bit difficult to use and has some problems with it. But we're going to use Google, uh, we're going to use uh, Chrome, um, not Chrome, uh, Firefox today. I'm, I'm a fan of Firefox. So here we have, um, opening, up, opening that up, I've already gone to gmail.com, and I'll show you. All you do is you type in gmail.com, as you can see here up in the corner, Press enter, and it's going to take you to the same screen. Um, so since we already have an account on here, it's it's not, you know, we're, we're not going to log in right away. I'm going to first show you how to create an account if you don't have one already. Um, so use another account. So we're going to create an account. So you can either do it for yourself or for a business. So if you have a business and you want to use Gmail to manage your business, you can specify it's for business. Um, but you know, for our purposes, we're just going to do for myself. So a personal um, Gmail account. So we'll do for myself. Now, one of the things that Gmail does is it asks for a lot of personal information. Um, it shouldn't be asking you for your social security or anything like that. So worry that's not what I mean personal I mean it's asking for your name date of birth stuff like that you don't have to give it that stuff you can make up a name so here I'm gonna just make up John Doe and we're gonna type in you know something into here so there's already something with kind of a suggestion but I'm gonna show you what happens when you type in something that is not available so John Doe that is not available. Um, when you're creating your Gmail password, it will let you know if that is not available. But for our purposes, we already kind of figured out what is available. So Turo Library Test is available. Just click the back screen if you're not too sure and it's still stuck on that. And there it is. So that, that email is available. Um, you create a password. So Well, yep, and it matches. So there you go. Um, you can optionally put in a phone number there. You can specify what country it's from. So if you're in the United States, you put United States, Afghanistan, you know, a whole list here of stuff that you can pick from any. But and most likely, you'll be in the United States when you're making this. Um, so you can put that in there. It's optional. Um, the reason why they have that is to sync up with your phone if you do a lot of Gmail stuff. 
Um, and it's also for safety and security for yourself when you're trying to log in. So it'll ask for your phone number and the whole bit. Um, so that's optional. You can have a recovery email, so put in an optional email. Um, you don't have to put, as I said before, you don't have to put your birth date, but if you want to, you can. You can personalize it like that for yourself. So I'll just do January 1, 1980, because why not? And mail, or you can even say rather not say, whatever you want to do. Next, da, 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 just a, an agreement thing. So they will ask you that stuff. There's a couple of more steps after this. Um, we don't really need to go through it beyond that point where we'd be creating an account um, at this at this point. Um, uh, there's not too much beyond this, really. It's just asking for a couple of more questions of information. Um, and then it brings you to a welcome screen and says, welcome to Gmail. You know, this is how it works sort of thing. Um, so not too much there. So I'm just going to cancel out of this. We're going to go back. And we're going to sign in instead. So we're going to sign in here. I'm going to type in the password for this. And there we go. We are logged in. So as you can see here, this is just our general um, email account that's associated with um, our YouTube channel. So you're going to see a lot of like YouTube and my business notifications here. Nothing, nothing too exciting. Um, and as you can see here, uh, first thing, first stop on our tour is you will notice that the default setting for a Gmail account uh, gives you three kind of inbox tabs that you have here. So you have your primary one, which has all your stuff that kind of comes in here. So yep, all all located here. You then have your social. Um, which it has kind of an OS and it asks, you know, um, whether or not something uh, is social, seems like it's social. Usually it associates, it, it, it follows an algorithm and it's self source, but you can go in and you can kind of specify that a little bit. Um, but yeah, this, this stuff is all here. Um, you don't need to worry too much about it for sorting and you can keep it all into primary. Usually that's the one you're gonna, going to want to go to. But these are the three main ones and you can tag them in a certain way as we go along to uh, to do to sort them as you want so that's the first thing now our next part is the inbox itself and marking uh, marking actions and uh, you know marking the emails and having certain actions done with the emails so if you look at your screen here you're gonna see up in this corner right here and select this this will select all the stuff you got there now you can this is mighty convenient if you're trying to delete a whole bunch of stuff at once um, or you're trying to mark things as unread whatnot it helps with with going through so you don't have to do every single individual one usually there's about 50 to 100 uh, emails per page in Gmail it's kind of depending on the settings that you have set up here you have other options so you can do all none selected you can do select them all to say, uh, like for example, you can select all the unread ones, unread, and then the starred and unstarred, and the red ones. It helps with filtering through what stuff you got. Um, you can refresh. So if you're waiting for an email to come in, you can refresh, 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 and see if anything new comes in uh, when you're waiting for waiting for an email. So we're just going to click uh, here on this email right here, just to give you an idea. So here it's just a generic update of, of our website and sort of thing. So what we're going to focus on here is archive. So archive is this little button right here. Now I'm not going to click this quite just yet, but as you can see, that's archive. That means it stores it later for you, so you can go back to it if it's something that you want to keep. It's not immediate, but you might want to keep for record's sake. So we'll go back here. You can also select it and do archive as well, right here on a specific one. So we will just click on the email itself. Or, well, let's go back. Let's go to a different one. 
and we'll go to this generic YouTube creator's email that came in. Um, we're going to archive it. So, archive, where did it go? So, if you look over here on the side where my mouse is, you're going to have a thing that drop down, drops down here. You might have to scroll a little bit, and you're going to go to... Let's see. Where is all mail? There it is. All right, I'm losing it. <laughs> so we go here, and as you can see, we have archived stuff. We have stuff that's in separate inboxes. Um, let's see. Here it is. We've archived it. And it'll stay in there until you choose to delete it. Um, so it's there. Um, that's kind of where all that ends up in archive is all mail ever that you've had. Um, here it indicates where it's located. So if you're in archive and you figure out, oh, what's in there? Well, things that say inbox mean it's just in your inbox. So, well, it's in your inbox currently at this moment. Um, there is also new photos were added to here is test which means this email is in one of these folders here which you can create yourself um, and there are other features that will tell you when something is located in a certain place so that's pretty cool and that's where that stuff kinda ends up now we're gonna go back to our regular inbox the next thing we're gonna do is important so here labels mark as important so like with a star you can mark this as important alright and it's marked as important and it's got this little symbol at the top that tells you it's important and see here yep that indicates it's important and that way you can keep track of stuff especially if you have a lot of emails um, and you're trying to suss out the ones that are important that you need to keep an eye on or ones that are maybe related to a job or, or school or something. Um, and the really neat thing is when you mark something as important, you can also go to this little tab here that's in this little drop-down area that's labeled important. And here, it's stored there. It's kind of stored all in one location. So if you select a whole bunch of things that are important, you put it there. And it ends up there. So we go to inbox again and now the next thing that we can do is go to snooze so this little clock at the end here is very useful for trying to deal with things in, in priority you might want to snooze something or put something to delay it a little bit um, until later so I will show you what I mean so we'll click on snooze so this email is going to disappear for a little bit and I can click on any one of these times or pick a select time or date and this email will re-manifest uh, a few days from now or whenever I choose for it to uh, appear so then I can deal with it then especially if I have a lot of things uh, and I'm trying to prioritize what's important that I need to work with or work on um, so this is a really neat tool for like saying okay we need to we deal with this but we'll deal with it later um, so we're not going to really do that right now, um, but, uh, you know, without say, just clicking on one of these here, it just sends it forward to whenever that you need it to be, and it'll end up in your inbox again uh, later for you, to, for you to deal with. So that's news. Now, the next thing you can do, similar to important, is star something. Starring something lets you know if something is starred, and again, like over here, it has its own little tab, just like the important tab. Um, it's not really too much, it's the same kind of function, um, but you might want to take advantage of starred and important stuff to kind of distinguish. Like, I might include something that's both important and starred because it might have a piece of information that I need um, that's current. Um, if it's not something current but I should keep on file then you know I can click start and that way it's kept kept to the side it's kept organized for me it's safe I don't know exactly you know um, I might not need it immediately but it's there 
um, depending on however that you want to deal with it. It's however that you choose to use the tool that's in front of you. So those are two important features. Um, the next thing to do is to report spam. and uh, Report something as spam. So I'll click on this email, and so if this looked suspicious, if this email looks suspicious, if you look at the top of the email, over here, not over here on this bar, but down here, you can go over to this little thing that says more, and you can report as spam, right here. Um, and you can also report as phishing, but I'll, I'll talk to you that in a little bit. So spam, if you want to know generally what spam is, if you don't know exactly what spam is, uh, spam is generally stuff that's advertisements, things that might not be fully trustworthy, um, you know, junk, basically junk, essentially. Not necessarily are all, is all spam, um, malevolent in its tensions. It could just be just an advertisement. It could be as tame as an advertisement all the way to something trying to trying to scam you. Um, but essentially that's what spam is. It's just junk stuff. Junk stuff that you really don't have time for, don't want to deal with. Um, and you can report it. Um, you don't have to go this far into doing that. You can you can even just get click on the email, click this, report as spam. Boom, it's reported as spam. You can also, and I'll, I'll uh, you know, the other thing you can do is if you know something looks suspicious or you know something is spam, you can just click on the email itself, or sorry, uh, click on the email selection itself right here. Um, and then you can go to reporting spam right there. And you can do multiple ones if you have a whole list of stuff that you know is spams. So I'm just going to go to promotions over here. And, you know, this wish thing over here, oh yeah, that looks that looks like an advertisement to me. So I'm gonna report it as spam. Report spam and unsubscribe. Report spam. So here you have the option of just reporting as spam, so they know it's spam, or you can report report the spam and unsubscribe from that service so they don't bother you anymore. Because um, sometimes that's how emails get kind of tossed around. They go onto separate lists, especially if you put your email out there and they keep on sending stuff to you and sending stuff to you um, and there's a way to unsubscribe from them there's a way to do that within the email itself or you can do that um, by this route um, and kind of the indirect route without having to open it so here we've we have reported that from sp uh, spam it's gone um, and it has been deleted too so no longer we're going to get any emails from wish.com or whatever this is um, and yeah, so we, we don't have to deal with it anymore. So that's how you report spam. Uh, the next thing we have are tasks. So what do we do with tasks? What are they? So we're going to go back to our regular inbox, our primary inbox here. And I'm just going to click on this one. Now, if let's say that this email right here was important and I need to deal with it today, but I have other stuff that's important too and I need to prioritize it. Well, I can go here, and I can, let's see, ch -ch -ch -ch. you're looking for, oh, what am I doing? No, right here, just click Add to Tasks. There, it's added to our tasks. That, you will have the sidebar over here that keeps track of all the things you need to go to to deal with on a regular day um, while you're working at your computer. So, you can add a whole bunch of emails that you need to know, that you need to take care of, um, and you can put them all in here. So I'm going to go back to regular inbox, and I'm going to put this in here too. I will add that to task as well. Um, let's say this is more important than the other one. You can actually grab them and kind of drag them, put them up here, um, and you can, you know, add tasks, type in certain subjects, lines, and stuff like that, and take care of it. Now, when you're all done, uh, so we can X out of this. Let's say we'll get back to that later and we go off and do what we want to do. Um, then we go back and we go see, okay, what other tasks we have? So where do you go to that taskbar? Well, look to your right over here and see this little pencil? Yeah, that's your tasks. Tasks are located right here. Click on that. Boom. You got them all back, back up and ready to go. 
Um, when you've completed a task, all you got to do is click the check mark. Boom, I've completed that task. That email has been taken care of. Boom, that task has been completed. I'm all set to go. And it congratulates you and you're all set to go. So that's how you manage your tasks real quick. Very simple, very easy, helps you deal with the day-to-day, -day, um, and you can prioritize it however that you need to. Now, um, another thing, especially if you're working with multiple people or organizations um, and you're trying to get go back and forth on scheduling something, you can connect it to your Google Calendar. Now, uh, your Google Calendar um, is something we won't fully cover today. We will just kind of mention it sort of thing um, to show you can use it in this program right from your email, and it all connects together. So let's say we need to work on this one. So I'm going to click here, and let's see. Where is that? Keep on changing the spots on me. Here we go. Create an event. So we are on this email. And this little drop down up here, um, as you can see, we have Marcus Red, Mark is not important, remove star, create event, filter, mute, so on and so forth. So if I want to filter messages like, you know, I can, if I want to create an event of this, especially if I'm corresponding with a few different people. I'll click on create, create event, and boom, we have a separate tab that comes up. And here we can go in and select a time and a date that we are going to be having an event. Um, you'll probably want to save this email. It probably has the credentials and stuff that you want, especially like if you're talking to Joe and Joe says, all right, let's meet um, at Sam's for 12 o'clock on Friday. And here you can you can keep the text from there explaining whatever the meeting is um, and, or event, and then you can type in the dates that you want here. You can click on this, and you can go in and select the day. You can pick the time, scroll through in the back, or you can even just type it in itself. Um, you can even select the time zone if you're traveling. If you're going from, you know, let's say uh, North Carolina to Ohio, or you're going from North Carolina to Colorado. Probably a better example. Um, and you need to switch over to Mountain Time. Well, you can do that too, and switch it over to Mountain Time. And, you know, there you go. And you can say, you can give yourself a notification. So you can add the location in what this, which this meeting is at. So let's say, see? It even gives you suggestions. So Tiro County and county public library see and it brings us right up uh, most locations at least most public and public locations and stores and stuff will have stuff so we'll say it's going to be at Turo County Public Library um, and you want to notify yourself beforehand and you can say all right well maybe I should give myself 30 minutes um, you could do you know an email notification or a regular notification on your phone um, however that you choose it, and that's that's one way of doing it. Um, and there's a color-coded way. I won't get too too um, in depth onto that. Uh, I think I think we're at a good spot right here of just at least introducing you to the concept um, of scheduling things through your Google account, uh, being able to use it more than just as a uh, simple email service, there is there is this convenience of being able to keep a schedule actively and not having to write things down. You can just schedule it, look at your phone, look at your computer, go to your calendar, boom, you know where you need to be. And so we're not going to save this. We would save it and it would appear, but I will do that another day. And we'll show you how to do that later on a different video. But today we're just showing you this is possible and we're going to go back now. So yeah, we're just going to discard it. We don't need it. So in calendars, we'll exit out of calendar. We'll go back to our inbox. And so, oh, one thing I almost forgot to do. Um, you can select things. Uh, another easy way, the way I keep track of it, is to change the status of things. You can mark as unread. And the unread, you know, essentially just tells, lets you know that this email hasn't been looked at. Um, it's a good way to differentiate and see what things you need to get to. So for this, we can just select this and it'll go back to being red. Um, we can select as unread or red, 
however that you want to, and you can do the whole thing and select it as red or unread and all set to go. And so that, yeah, that's that. Um, so now that we've uh, shown you how to make a calendar and mark a few things, uh, we're going to show you how to mute an email too. So let's say that this guy is kind of annoying. You can go to, let's see, oh, wrong one. Little dots right here at the top. Click on that, and we're going to mute it. So that means conversation muted. Well, where did the muted conversation go? Well, it goes to all mail. And yep, right here. It goes into your all mail and it's muted. And you can click again to unmute it. That takes away the label, and yeah, any any labels that you put here, you can change it, and then it goes back to normal. So, inbox. Yeah, so it, if it's not in your inbox right away, some of them go back to your inbox, some others don't when you do that. Um, but you can certainly, you know, go down here, and it'll certainly be in your all mail all mail stuff. So here's that email that we were looking at before. So it's right there. Um, so now we will go back to our inbox and I'm going to show you how to forward and reply to certain emails. So, you know, let's say I'm in a conversation here and I want to forward reply to this person. So you click reply and at the bottom here it pops up with a new email. Now, the other thing that's not shown here that can be shown when you have multiple people in a email conversation um, is that you can do a reply all. So it looks exactly like this symbol right here, um, but all the the only difference is is that it's two two on stacked on top of each other, and so if you have a whole bunch of email addresses in here, um, you don't have to re-add them. Um, if you, uh, well, if you have a whole bunch of email addresses, then in one particular email that you're responding to, you don't have to read add them. You just press reply all, and it automatically redirects to all of them when you press send. Um, and so that's that's how you do that. Um, and so we're gonna kind of, you know, uh, delete this because we're not gonna really reply. I mean, they're, they're gonna say, you know, why are you replying to us? <laughs> If you don't want to uh, reply to somebody and you want to take a message and forward it on to somebody else, you can quite literally forward it. So, you know, similar to up here, it's kind of located in the same spot. And you just click on more and you have forward. You click on forward and it comes down here and for forwarding, just type in the email address that you need it to go to. Um, the other feature here, and you'll notice this when you compose an email, is you add CC recipients or BCC recipient, uh, recipients. Um, so essentially what these two things mean is CC is that you include somebody in on the conversation. It's not directly addressing that person, but it's um, allowing for them to be in on what's happening in the conversation. Um, the other one is BCC. Now BCC um, is the same function, however, the person that you're sending to is not aware of who else is in on the conversation or who else is in on the email. And the same thing with the BCC, they might only see the two sender. You could put a whole bunch of BCC people in there. This is more administrative sort of thing that happens um, in terms of emails being sent. Um, it's not 100% important. Um, it, just depends on who's what audience you want. Is that that's basically the difference that this that these are. Uh, two is just directly to you're addressing that person, and lets them know that they are the subject of the conversation or the audience of the conversation, I should say. Um, but anyways, so yes, we're here at the forwarding point of it, um, and so as you can see, while we're composing an email, um, I'm just gonna you know kind of exit out of this here. Um, there's not too much else that we can we can talk about because you can forward, you can add all sorts of stuff and just send it forward. 
Um, so we're going to move on from here and we'll get we'll go back to how to compose a full email for somebody um, to send something to them. So we're just going to delete that. Um, and also a side note here, we also have reply and forward down here as well. So if you're already at the bottom of the screen, it's mighty convenient to have it there too. So we'll scroll back up and we're going to go back to our inbox and we are back in our inbox. Now, um, the next thing we can do is you can actually print stuff from your emails. Print it, send it to any printers that you have connected to your uh, device. So here, we'll click on this. Um, and the most easy place to go is, boom, right here, print all. And you'll print everything that's in this conversation that you have going on here. You can also go indirectly, do the little drop down here, and click print as well. And that's another way to print as well. Um, a quick uh, shortcut if you want to print something is you do control and P if you're using a Mac with a Mac keyboard it's command and P so command P there you go or control P if you have a regular Microsoft desktop or Microsoft computer just in general and that's how you do that so we we're not gonna print this but that's a that's a quick easy shortcut for uh, printing something so we'll cancel that. And uh, yeah, so there's that for printing. Um, the next thing you can do with an email is to delete it. So I'm going to go back. And um, I think we kind of touched a little bit on deleting, but our delete button is right over here at the end. Just like with the snooze, the archive, and to mark is on red. Yes, there's all little, little extra tools that you can do here for doing a lot of the same functions. It's very accessible. makes it easy to... You know, if you're in one, one place, you don't have to go all the way over to the other. Makes it a little bit more convenient. But we're going to delete a message. So let's go down to here, and we're just going to delete this message because it's a security thing, just letting me know somebody else is in there. Um, you can go down here. Let's say, oh, I didn't mean to delete that. You can go to your trash, and you can recover it if you need to. Um, you might have to go by date in which it was in there. I think it's kind of a little bit old. We'd have to go on to the next page, but, you know, we'll use the opportunity to go to the next page. So we go to here. And we're on the next page. And click there again. All right, it's a little bit of ways back, but it's in there somewhere. Yep. So yeah, that's where that's where the trash goes um, when you delete something. Um, you have also a spam box, and I figure we should probably talk about this at some point. Spam. Um, so things that are blatantly um, mail that you don't want, you just go to here to spam, and you'll see what's in there. Because sometimes what will happen um, is that you know usually Google has a pretty good filtering system. Um, it's relatively reliable, but sometimes it's a little bit too good. Um, and you might be getting somebody, get an email from somebody that you might be their first email to you and the computer might not recognize it. So it might kick it to spam. So spam throws everything that seems like it's not trustworthy. But if you, if somebody says, I sent you an email, I haven't received, um, did you receive it? And you say no, well, this is, might be where it ended up. It might have ended up in spam, and it might be that Google's just being a little bit too uh, cautious and kind of kicking things out, doesn't recognize. doesn't delete it. It will delete it. It does have a time period in which it's deleted. So up, as you see up here, um, so you don't have to go through it every single time. Messages that have been in spam for more than 30 days will automatically be, del be deleted. Now, if you want to keep keep your house clean, you can delete all spam right now and do that. Um, or you can just leave this, let it just go out on its own. That's fine. It's not going to do anything to your computer or your, your email service. So we'll go back to Inbox. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how to report stuff. So we're going to go to our promotions thing here. Um, and similarly to how we reported something as being spam, um, you know, you click on the email and you can 
All right, this is just an advertisement. <laughs> it takes away some stuff. If it knows it's an advertisement, it won't give you that those options immediately. So you'll click on here to this thing and go down to here and you want to report it as phishing. Now phishing is the serious sort of spam. Uh, phishing is, you know, it can be somebody that's trusted if, if somebody's hacked into another person's account. Um, but, and this is a bit of internet safety for you, so you know, um, in case in case you don't know, uh, don't uh, don't open up a link from an email you do not know or an email sender you do not know. Uh, that is a form of phishing. Um, that is a form of scam. Don't click on that on those. I um, mean, you can just click on this to report something as phishing, and they will be able to track it down um, or make it know. Uh, you know, make it aware that. This is not a trusted source. Uh, phishing, very bad. Um, the other thing to look out for, what type of phishing emails there are out there, um, are emails that um, are asking for your information or make a threat to you and say, you need to give me your information or else sort of thing. Um, it could be a threat and saying, I have something on you, you better send to this address or else. Or it could be as simple as, um, you know, the traditional, the joke that's kind of been around since the 90s, um, a Nigerian prince from some other, from some land who needs to transfer funds over, and if you give him X amount of money, um, you will get this fortune sort of thing. is is another form of phishing as well. You'll see scams of a similar sort of, sort of caliber where they ask for information the point is is just don't engage if you don't know it don't engage if you have somebody that's a friend that sends you kind of a suspicious email just don't engage it, that seems a bit weird uh, it's always a good thing to just double check like once I had a friend who had you know gotten an email um, you know had sent me an email saying that this is the information that you requested thing um, and it was very vague. They didn't re didn't address me. They just said hi, no addressing. They didn't even know their own name. They just said sincerely, um, me or something something along those lines. And it had a link in it, and it also had something to download. I, you don't engage with that. Um, I just double checked. I gave my friend a call, let him know, hey, uh, did you send an email to me with an attachment? And they said no. And so it looks like you might have been hacked. So that's another form of. Not necessarily phishing, but uh, Trojan, like kind of sending a sending around a virus, uh, somebody hacking into an account and trying to send around a virus and stuff. So yeah, just be very careful. Um, and you know, you have these tools here. If something seems suspicious, it's nothing wrong with reporting it phishing. It's nothing wrong with reporting it as spam uh, and sending it into delete. Better be safe than sorry. So, anyways, back to what we were discussing on terms of. Uh, using Gmail. So we've covered that. Um, so the next thing we can do is hit show original. Now show original is not really necessary to know but we'll talk about it. Um, so show original we'll click on that. It's just the code. Nothing too exciting. It's just basically what the HTML is for that email. Uh, expressing what that email is. Um, you might not need, you wouldn't really need this if uh, as a regular person, a regular average day person. This might be more relevant for somebody who does coding or computer work. They might want to see see how somebody had done something. Uh, but it's not, not totally necessary to know. Um, but you know where it is, and that's what matters. So that's how you that's how you see where all the code is for all this stuff how where where it came from how how it was inputted into there the next thing is to download the message and we're going to go here and you can download the message so if it's something really really important and you don't want to get to don't want it to get lost in your mailbox or it's a piece of information that you need to print out you can download it so here let's say i need this i'll download this message Cancel. I'm not going to download this because it's kind of spam. <laughs> I'm just going to go back to my regular inbox. Uh, I'm going to go to, I don't know, I'll go to the YouTube Terms of Service thing because, you know, why not have a copy of it? 
Um, we'll go down to download message, and there it is. And it gets downloaded. It has a message form. Uh, it's a document. And there it is. We don't need to have that. Um, and that way you have it on your computer. You don't have to worry about losing it. Um, so that's how you do that. Now, the other thing you can do um, is you can translate messages that come into you. Um, so here we got this uh, YouTube Terms of Service because, you know, it's YouTube. Um, and we're going to go down to translate the message. All right. Ooh. So the default one that comes up is detect language and whatever your le language setting is for your account. So for ours, it's obviously English. Um, let's say that I want to, you know, I'm, I want to practice my Italian. And actually, other way around, English. And I'm going to translate it into Italiano. Translating. And there you go. It's all all translated for you, ready to go, um, and you can do the other way too. Um, you can click View Original Message, View Translated Message, um, and I'm gonna move it back to its default settings because you know I like I like Italian, but I'm you know I'm not fluent, <laughs> um, so we'll keep it back to English. But that's how you do that, especially if you have something in that you don't know the language you can still have a conversation essentially with some with somebody who lives in another country um, by by having this nice little translation feature now I don't know the reliability of it it's, uh, Google Google is notorious for having for taking quite a few shortcuts with regard to translation but it might be enough just to help you get by or get the gist of whatever somebody's saying I wouldn't put too much investment into it, but it, it would help. So that's that. Um, so we'll go back to our inbox. We've hit uh, translate, and now we can move something to. Uh, next thing we're going to go on to is how to move an item into a specific folder. So we got a couple of folders here. I'm going to click this here, and I'm going to move to folder. Now you can create your own folder too. You don't have to select from one of these here. So I'm going to create my own folder. I'm going to name it test3. Create new. Create. And see, it's already created test3 folder and it's already put in there. So all set to go. Um, you can also you know, go to this item here, move to uh, inbox, you can send it back to inbox, but it's still in this area here. Um, so yeah, and you can remove labels too. So if you're wondering, you don't want don't want that label on there, you can go right here as we showed before to remove labels, and you can also just remove labels this way on the little mark that's here for it. So we can, you know, get rid of test three, and there you go. Now it's back in the regular inbox, all set to go. So. We've showed you how to move stuff around. We've showed you kind of how to do all the stuff here. Uh, well, not all the stuff here. We've still got to show a couple other things. Well, while we're over here, might as well show you a couple of the tabs that we didn't get to. Um, so, obviously, starred, snooze, then there's sent. So, stuff that you've sent to other things. So, the only thing I have sent in here is just the unsubscribe thing because I sh unsubscribe to that particular. Uh, um, T uh, particular message or that particular sender and you can do that um, inbox oh the other thing I forgot to mention is how to block a sender so you go down here and you can block a sender too if it's bad enough so if you have somebody who's not a very pleasant person or you have spam that's coming in from a particular website um, you can block them and just block them indefinitely. It doesn't get rid of all the emails that, that's currently there. You'll have to go through and kind of get rid of it yourself, but it blocks them from sending anything further to you, and it'll automatically send it to junk or just bounce it. Um, and that's how that works. So we'll go back to inbox here. Now, um, as I was saying, so we have starred, snoozed, sent, drafts, 
So anything that you were working on, but you hadn't finished, will appear in here. So if you started a message, it isn't done, um, that's one way you could go about it. You can go to test, go down to important, chats, so you can have chats along with it. So there's another feature of this is instant message. So if you have an email address with somebody, you can instant message them and they'll they'll appear on the screen over here especially when you start forming a contact list um, you also have scheduled so for emails and I'll show that when we get to it um, you can schedule an email that goes out it doesn't have to go out that moment that you're sending it you can schedule it to go out on a later date um, we've got all mail over here that we covered before we've got spam trash so everything that you've deleted ends up in trash. Categories, again, you know, social, updates, forums, promotions. Uh, manage labels, create a new label. So like up here, we have tests one, two, and three. We can create another label if we want, or manage labels too. So here, um, you know, we can go in show, hide, show if unread, hide, show, remove, you can do all sorts of actions um, in settings for, for dealing with that. Um, so we're kind of jumping ahead a little bit. Um, so we're going to go back to inbox and now we're going to show you how to use the settings. Now the settings, now if you look at your computer here or your screen, just go look over in the right corner over here. See this little gear? That's your settings. Now, there is a kind of a very easy access settings that's already there. Um, you have the default, you have comfortable, which is kind of what this is already in, and you have compact. And compact is where it lists all your emails very, very tightly. I'm going to go with the default, um, and the density, as I said, it depends on how many emails you want to have on the screen at a time. Um, there's also themes that you can have. So here you have a couple of ready-to-go themes. So we're going to view all themes. So we have, you know, a chessboard, leaves. So let's see what that looks like. we got a chessboard. we got a canyon. i got a caterpillar. Um, i got a beach. You know, make it aesthetic. Make it your own. Here is kind of let your imagination run, run, run wild. Um, and you can even select from your own photos. Um, and here you can add certain textured backgrounds, text and background. You can add vignette. You can add a blur to give it a little bit of a look. So here we'll give it a little bit of a blur. So you see here, give it a little bit of a blur. See, yeah, there it's a little bit of a blur. But we're not going to do that. Uh, add a vignette. Make the corners a little bit darker like that. We don't. We're not going to go full on that, but you, that's to show you how to, how to add the tool. Choose text background, like light or dark, um, and we'll do dark. Yep. So here we have a dark background behind it, or you can have light behind your text as well. Um, and so we'll stick with that. I'm I'm not going to really do too much to change this. Um, I can certainly add my photos to here. Um, if I have a particular photo that I like, I can stick that in there and make it my own as well. Um, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to cancel and go back to what I had before because I'm kind of happy with that right now. It's very boring, I know, but it's, it's, it's functional. <laughs> it's functional. So we're going to go back to our settings. Um, so we have that. We have inbox type. So we have the default setting that's here. We have important first, so anything that's labeled as important goes to the top. Anything that's unread can go to the top first. Starred stuff goes to the f goes first. You have priority boxes. You can put up there. You can select which one. You can customize um, multiple inboxes. You can put in there as well. Um, so we're just going to stick with the default, where it's just chronological. Um, you can have a reading pain. Uh, reading pain. Um, no split. Um, you can have right of box, left of box, or below box, I mean. Um, you know, have that in there too. Uh, conversation view. Yeah, it's kind of 
simple adjustments that you can have and put into your computer to make it kind of, well, put into your Gmail account to make it your own. You don't have to do anything. If you're fine with the way it is, you can. If you want to change it, go right ahead. It's it'll it's it's your Gmail. Make it the way you want it. Um, now, if you want to do more deeper settings in terms of your computer, you click on under this gear tab, you click on see all settings. So we're going to click on see all settings and we're in general. Now, if you want to change the language settings, you can. You can, we're currently in English, I could switch over to Espanol and everything that's all the stuff here will switch over to a different language. Right to left, editing support off or on, all sorts of different things. Uh, phone numbers, you know, default uh, reply behavior, reply, reply all, default text style, um, you know, grammar suggestions on. You can, if you don't like the grammar suggestions that come up or the spelling suggestions that come up, or you're trying to practice your your spelling to make sure that you're more precise, you can get you can turn it off, and that way it won't be coming up the whole time. So it's got a lot of stuff in here. So the Smart Compose, where it kind of figures out what you're saying. Um, yeah, it, you know, all sorts of stuff that you can go in here and change it. Um, you can also have a vacation responder. So if you are, for example, um, going off for a few days and you want to be completely away from uh, from whatever that you're doing, uh, from your work, um, you can go in here and put your vac vacation responder on. You put it on, select the first day that it's going to come in and the last day that you want it on. Um, you put the subject saying on vacation to... Uh, Rome, for example. You put that in there, say your little message, um, and you can either have the choice of saying only send a response to people in my contacts, or just leave it as is, and anybody who responds to you will get a message back. Um, and that's that's essentially how that is. So there's a lot of little neat tools you can do. You can also add a signature, and create a signature. So I'll show you how you can do that. So here, create new. Signature name, Jared, or, yeah, just Jared, we'll do that, create, and then you go in here, you type whatever it is, so, Jared, Jacobone, uh, librarian, Turo, County Public Library and I might want to bold my name for example I'll bold it here uh, Pedigree Regional Libraries and email J-A-C-A-V-O-N-E at P-E-T-T-I-G-R-E-W-L-I-B-R-A-R-I-E-S dot O-R-G and phone 2796-3771 and you can also add if you want um, a photo in there or add a link as well like you might have a personal page or you can insert an image and this image might be the logo of your company or your business card logo whatever it shall be um, and you can put it in there um, and that way you have a signature ready to go um, and we're gonna you know that's all set so we got that in there we've created that save changes so now we got a signature and we can insert that at a time it does not automatically generate um, you can get rid of it um, if you want. Uh, you go back into the settings and get rid of it if you need to. Um, but we'll go to see all settings. Now, we're going to go back to our labels. So we kind of covered this a little bit here. A lot of things that you can do. Show, hide, show, hide. Um, all that sort of stuff is available here. So you can make it however that you want. Uh, inbox. Alright, so you got updates you can put on here, or forums that you can put on here. 
Um, you can select default, import, you know, as we were going through before, we got that stuff there. Enable reading pane, uh, provides, yeah, show markers, no markers. Um, and if you have any questions on that, you can watch a video here, it gives you a little bit more. Um, and you can have override filters include important messages in the in the inbox that may have been filtered out. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of things you can do in here. Accounts and import, change password, so very important if you want to change your password, you can go here and change password. Change password, recovery options, so add a new phone number, add a new email, other Google account settings, you know, yeah, not, not, not too much to explain here, but this is where it's all located. Send email as this. Um, you can edit the info. And you can keep it as this. Uh, the email address, have the name, or you can change it to something different entirely and select that. You don't need to do that necessarily, but you know, that's what it is. You can change the name of this. If the organization turtle.libraryNC at gmail.com, um, if we were to ever change our name to, you know, the Memorial Turtle County Public Library or something, we'd go in there and change it. Um, and that's what we would do. Um, we can add an email account, uh, check email from other accounts. So that's the other great thing about Gmail is that it's very collaborative, allows for you to have. If you have multiple emails, which is most people, most people who work with a computer nowadays, at least have two emails, personal and um, work related, uh, and you might want to be able to access something all in one email, um, and that's a good way of doing that. Uh, grant access to your account. Mark conversations read as open up by others. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of things that you can do here to to uh, whatever that you need. Um, filters, you can create a filter to move out messages um, to different emails, like say, create a new, f uh, you know, create a new filter uh, from to subject words has the words. So you can find any emails or any potential emails that come from a certain person or to a person, subject has words, whatever, you can filter them. Um, so yeah, we don't need to do that. You can go through if you have a list of blocked emails, and let's say that you you know blocked somebody a long time ago, but you've you know you're friends with them again, or you you need to talk to them or something. Um, you can unblock selected addresses. Um, you might well if if you block somebody, they might have blocked them for uh, they might have been hacked, and you want to block their messages from coming in until it's rectified. Um, and that's one way about doing that. You can undo it, select all. Again, same features here of selecting stuff. Um, there's also forwarding in POP, IMAAP stuff. Um, I won't get too much into this, but you can add a forwarding address. So, you know, like we talked about here, whether well, accounts and other emails, you might have a couple of emails and you want to streamline it into one. You can specify, add a forwarding address, say that all your emails that come into here automatically get sent to this other email. Um, you can add have add-ons, so add-ons are essentially extra programs that you can get to add to this for you know for aesthetic purposes or functional purposes uh, especially related to work um, and you might want to do that. Chat and meet, hangouts on, show the meet section in the main menu, you can do that advanced, you know, auto advanced, all sorts of other stuff you can put in here, disable, enable, offline, unavailable, and themes that we talked about before, so you set theme, yeah, same as before. So, not a heck of a lot here, but there's a lot of stuff that you can do to really make, really have control over your account. Now that we've covered the settings, we're going to go back to our inbox here, and you might be wondering what some of the other stuff is up here. Well, um, you got this. This just minimizes this over here. This takes you back to your main Google sc Gmail screen. Um, you got your questions here, support. So if you're having problems, help, training updates, blah 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 blah. You know, you can do that. Rarely need to use it. Um, 
if you're having something that's really technical and you don't know what's going on, you might go here, but I don't think you will need to use it that often. Here is the Google Apps. Now, Google Apps is really, really cool. Google Apps gives you the ability to um, kind of have a, at a mobile office, essentially, in a way. Um, you have, it's connected to YouTube, um, it's connected to my business, so if you are have a business account, or a business email, you can connect to your My Business page and manage your My Business from there. You've got Maps in here too, uh, YouTube, Google Play, G News, Gmail, of course, that we're already in, uh, Meet and Drive. And Drive is really cool. I'll just open it to give you an idea as to what it is. So Drive is this. It's basically a free version of Word. And it's compatible with everything. <laughs> Makes it a heck of a lot easier. Um, and you can do new here, and you can get new files uploaded. You can do slides, equivalent of PowerPoint, Sheets, Excel, uh, Google Docs, and it's convertible. So if you have something in Pages on on a, a Mac and you want to convert it over to Word, um, this is a good way of converting it. You can upload the file, uh, file upload, or upload a folder. Um, it's a really, really good tool. I'm not going to dive into it, but I'm just letting you know what's here. I'm going to cut out of that. Um, and you got all sorts of nifty things here that we could spend hours and hours and hours upon talking about. A lot of cool things. Don't have the time to, to do it right now, today, but we will eventually cover it. Um, so we'll exit out of that. Now, the next thing we got to go to is Google Account. So we're going to click on our Google Account here. And we're going to go to Manage Your Google Account. And in your Manage Google Account, manage your data and personalization. Let's see. You know, web accessibility. Well, I, I went a little bit too fast. I'll go back. I apologize. So if you're curious as to what I did, I clicked on here. Click to Manage Your Google Account, and it took me to this main page here. Um, here, Privacy and Personalization. It's kind of more settings of stuff that you can do. You can pause location history. You can do YouTube history. You can turn on that. You can go back and look at what you um, listened to uh, or watched. Um, and you can go to web and app, activ app activity. Um, so it'll track all your drive stuff as well. And you can turn that off. You don't have to have it on. Or you can have a pause. Um, add personalization. Uh, ad personalization, you can specify what ads you want to come to your account. Um, and, you know, lots of little things here, and you can show manage your storage. Now, we don't have a heck of a lot in here. Um, uh, we don't have anything in here, really. <laughs> we have probably a little bit in here. Um, and there would be ways to download and store things online, because 15 gigs seems like a lot, but it can fill up quite fast, especially in today's modern age. Uh, and right now we have the current free plan. If you need more data for some reason, you don't want to download stuff, you know, there's all these options here. We're not going to talk about that today. That's that's an entirely different beast. But it's there if you really, really are utilizing your Google, uh, your Gmail account. Um, accessibility, you know, all sorts of tools here. A lot of the stuff that we've seen before kind of in here. Um, and we have here business features, your business. So business personalization on, we got our business stuff over here. Now, so we're going to go back again. We did our privacy and personalization. So security issues, secure account. So it's going to say that, you know, you need to make your thing, you know, recent security events, review one critical event, remove your account from Windows. Uh, this is just reviewing that somebody, that we logged into a different computer that didn't know where it was from. Now, I've already seen it, we're fine. <laughs> uh, remove your account from Windows. You can remove, if you have it on a different computer, especially if you, if your computer is broken or, you know, not very good, you can select which device you have inactive 10 days ago so you can remove that if you need to so um and that's that's it's just recognizing the device so it knows which which account it is um and you have all these security settings just to make sure that you're all safe um and again we already kind of talked about account storage so we don't really need to talk too much about that 
Uh, privacy suggestions, again, kind of the same thing here. It's going to be telling you how to make yourself more secure, more private. Um, and you can tell it how much information you want it to collect on you. Um, but essentially that's what that is. Next is our personal info. And as you can see in personal info, we have our contact information, we have our basic information, photo of the account, our name here, Toro County Public Library, um, our birth date, so the date that the facility was founded, October 6th, 1982, opening of the current facility of the Toro County Public Library, uh, gender, I mean, rather not say, <laughs> we are, I mean, do buildings have a gender? <laughs> Um, and a password, um, that's hush hush. Um, and down here you'll see contact info, but we won't really go down there because there's a phone number that's associated down there. Um, but it has your email and your phone uh, down here. So we don't really need to explore too much down here. Um, it's just telling what your contact and your backup email is um, if you want it. Um, and so we're going to go back home now. And the next thing we're going to go to is uh, data and personalization. So our data, review suggestions, again, we came across that. Um, and, you know, it's a lot of the same stuff that we've already kind of covered. We also have, let's see, yep, it's a lot of the same stuff that we talked about before. Our security... Um, so here is really nifty. So if you suspect somebody's logging into your account, um, then you can check here and see, okay, these are all the new devices that have logged into this account. Um, and so we had something, somebody log in on the 22nd of December on a computer that it hasn't recognized before and a computer that we logged in on Windows January 5th. Well, that's okay. We know which ones those are. Um... And as you see here, you have signing into Google, same stuff as before. Um, and we skipped over kind of the phone number, contact information, but that's that's up there as well. Um, this says what devices you're currently on. So here we're on our Mac. Um, there's a Mac that we've also logged into before. Um, and then there's a Windows device that we've logged in before. So, you know, it keeps track and lets you know who, where else it has been logged into. Um, you also have third-party apps with account access. So Adobe Media Encoder has access to YouTube. It's something else. Don't worry about it. Um, you have less secure apps, app access, turn on X access, not recommended. Um, you know, it, just more technical stuff. Don't really need to worry too much about um, then we have people and sharing. So contact info saved from interactions. That gets saved. Contact info from your device. You can put that on there. Uh, blocked. You can keep that contact information in there. Um, manage location sharing. Uh, let them know, uh, you know whether or not you want them to know where you are. Um, shared endorsements and ads. You know, don't need to worry about that. Payments and subscriptions. So for our purposes here, um, we don't have any purchases or subscriptions or anything in here because we don't buy anything with this com with this account. Though you may choose to. Uh, and here, like with anything else, you go in, enter your credit card, your Google Pay, whatever it is, um, and it tracks all that for you. It keeps track of it for you. It's good if you prefer to purchase through them. Uh, it is a useful tool. I will say Google is pretty secure with a lot of their stuff, they're not the most secure out there, but they're pretty secure. Um, and so if you want to make purchases through the Google Gmail app, you certainly can. Um, and that's that for here. Now, um, we're going to go back to our home, and we're going to go exit out of this, and we're back in our inbox, and we're going to do one last thing before we finish up today. Um, I'm going to show you how to compose a message itself. So we're going to click on Compose here, and you can type in an email. No, I'll type something in that's, let's see, um, 
C A V O N E at P E T T I G R E W L I V R A R I E S dot O R G. Um, and that's my that's my work email. Um, and we can do test as the subject of that. Um, and from here, you can start composing whatever your message is. Um, you have all sorts of options. You can do so. Let's see. Yeah, you can highlight it like usual text. Um, you can formatting options. So here you have this little thing pop up here. So let's say I want to make this bold. Click bold, and it's bold. Um, if we don't want it to be bold, we can unbold it as well. We can do italicize, unitalicize, underline, a little bit. You can change the color of it, so you can play around with it. You can change the font size, so small, normal. I think it's unnormal right now. Um, you can change the font style as well. And it's got a whole list of here. It's not super lengthy. It's just enough for the purposes that you need it for, really. Um, and then you can do this. You can send to the center. You can send it off to the side. You can send it off to the side here. Um, you can create bullet point uh, numbered points here. You can do bullet points. You can do indent, indent, indent back. You can cross out something or remove formatting from something. You can strike through. Of course, we're going to unstrike through. You can quote or unquote. Oh gosh, not what I was intending. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of little tools here. It's not it's not Word, but it's enough. It, it'll you can do a couple of tips and tricks here for stuff. So we're gonna just do Jared or Hello Jared, and so we'll get this out of our way. We can also attach files to it. So we can click this, and we can grab onto one of our files here. And so let me grab something simple to grab here. We'll grab the 1941 compressed. There we go. Open. There we go. And we'll put that in there so we can attach it. And we have an attachment. There we go. We can also put an insert, a link. So I'll just go to Amazon and grab a random link, Amazon.com. Um, let's say I'm searching around on Amazon and I want, I don't know, Catcher in the Rye. Now, the simple way, you can copy and paste it. So copy. Or, no, we'll just go to the actual thing here. We're going to insert a link. Copy your link, or nope, not what I was trying to do. There we go. There we go. Copy. Or you can also right click, copy. Go back here. Text to display. Book I want. And then put that in there. Press OK. And then you can open link a new tab, and it takes you to the book you want. Yay! Yay! So there's that. So you can insert a link in there. You can insert an emoji. So I'm going to insert an emoji here. It's pretty cool. I'm going to give it some space because it's kind of blocking stuff up. I'm going to insert a couple of emojis because everybody likes some emojis. Emojis are cool. Um, and you get all sorts of options here for stuff. You can scroll down and throw all sorts of different things in here. So it's pretty cool. Um, you can also grab something from your drive. Um, this is a little bit advanced, but I'm going to show you where you can get. I'm going to show you what you can do. So we'll click on this. Um, and you have your drive stuff. So here, if you click it, it'll link, create a link within your email to the drive. We, we don't need to do that. So we're we, we're good <laughs> you can insert a photo and so we'll click here and we got a photo here that's in there we can upload something from our computer so it, it grabs what's readily available in here 
Um, but we can upload something, choose to upload something from our computer. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, we'll just grab one of the thumbnails from one of our previous videos. And then we put that in there. And so that's in our, that's in our thing as well. Um, and we can insert our signature. So we do that, no signature, um, or insert signature. And so we have the Jared signature, as we talked about a little bit before. Now, that's pretty much most of the stuff here. Um, there's this little timed thing, uh, turn confidential mode on or off, that this is to be confidential, just say that's confidential. Um, and you want it, you know, say if you can check spelling. So it doesn't recognize this stuff here. That's okay, because they're names. Um, plain text mode. That just kind of makes it very plain text. It's, it's okay. It's more for coding purposes that you have that. You can print this email as well. So click on that, for example. And this is what it'll look like when you print it out. Um, but we're not going to print it out, because we don't need to. Um, we're going to exit out of that. And let's see what other stuff. Smart Compose Feedback. Um, if you want... Yeah, you don't really need to worry about that. Uh, now, the last thing, schedule send. So I could send this right now, or I can schedule when I want to send it. So I can send it tomorrow morning, like we did with the snooze button. Similar. Or pick a date. Um, and so now we have all of our email. Everything's in there that we want. Um, and we'll just press send. And boom, we have sent our first email. Now, if you have any questions, I know that we're kind of all over the place here. It's a lot of things to cover, um, but don't hesitate to come on in and ask us about um, ask us about the computer, ask us about Gmail, how to use it, where to go from there. Um, there are lots and lots of things to do here. Just let us know. We're here to help you. I hope that this helped you out today. Um, I hope you learned a little bit of something from this. Rem uh, remember, you can rewind and go forward on this video. If you have any questions, just reach out to us. We're here to help. Um, and so next time, we will be exploring Google Drive um, and, couple, and a couple of the apps within the Google Drive app. Um, thank you very much for joining us today, and uh, we hope to see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.